This program is a Warren Stiebel production in association with SICA. Funding for Firing Line is made possible by a major grant from the John M. Olin Foundation, Incorporated. Additional support is provided by the Annenberg Foundation, the Laurel Foundation, L. John Polite, Jr., and the Friends of Firing Line. Uh, this being, as we have frequently been reminded, the decade of the American woman, it is appropriate to fix attention on their material situation. One of our guests today informs us in her new book that two-thirds of all recent first marriages will end in divorce, that nearly 80% of all married women will become widows, that 50% of all women older than 65 in the United States are widows, and that the average duration of widowhood is 15 years. What better time to write a book called What Every Woman Should Know About Her Husband's Money, which is what Mrs. Shelby White has done. She is a financial journalist who has written and lectured on the subject of women and money in many publications and before many audiences. Our second guest is a professor of law, Mary Moats Wenig, graduated from Vassar and from Columbia University Law School, <coughs> and is a <coughs> professor at the Bridgeport School of Law at Quinnipiac College. She has published very widely and is an expert on the question of women's rights and women's predicaments as wives. We have, of course, eight states that have community property, the exact meaning of which I will leave it to Professor Moores to uh, elucidate on. And the question arises whether there should be a federal law guaranteeing to women equivalent rights. And in the absence of such protections, what does Shelby White uh, advise? First, Professor Wenig, would you tell us what community property dictates? Community property says very simply that uh, forget about this lip service to the fact that husbands and wives uh, join an economic partnership when they marry. That's lip service, except in the uh, what are now nine community property states in the United States. Uh, in, as far as I know, all of the uh, Latin American countries in part of Canada, in most of the Western European countries, if not all. Uh, community property says very simply that everything acquired in the course of the marriage, every paycheck that's brought into the door, belongs 50% to husband and 50% to wife. It doesn't make any difference whose title is on that, whose name is on that paycheck. Everything <coughs> acquired in the course of the marriage, with certain exceptions. Um, principal exception is inheritance <coughs> and uh, gifts from third persons. That's considered separate property. If you're in a community property jurisdiction, you recognize that there is community property and separate property. Separate property is what you bring into the marriage and what you acquire during marriage by gifts and inheritance. There are some variations among the nine community property states in the United States. Um, the biggest variation um, has to do with income from separate property. The true community property states, those that uh, adopted the Spanish and uh, Western European principle, um, say that income from separate property is community <clears throat> property. What about an enhancement in its value? Good question. The laws differ. Um, there are variations. Um, I think that the appropriate law and the simplest law is that uh, appreciation in value um, is jointly shared. during the course of the marriage is itself um, community property. I find it hard to distinguish between gains that we call capital gains and income that we call ordinary mm -hmm. income. Um, some states differentiate on the basis of natural inflation, but um, original partnership law, the <coughs> partnership law of commercial partners, says very simply that appreciation in the course of the partnership, of assets contributed to the partnership, belong equally to the partners. Well, let me ask Ms. <coughs> Mrs. Steele this question. Uh, 
Suppose uh, Mrs. Jones decides to um, leave Mr. Jones mm -hmm. uh, and proceeds to get a divorce. Uh, does she, even having taken the initiative, participate equally in uh, all the income he's earned? In a divorce, the laws become quite different, even in a community property state, because then in some of the community property states, and I believe you are more of an expert on this certainly than I am, but in many of the community property states, what happens when there's a divorce is you go into something called equitable distribution, in which all of the assets that came into the marriage, what's called the so-called marital property, regardless of who earned them, are then distributed according to certain criteria, usually whether it's going to be someone having custodial care of the children, how long the marriage, the earning capacity of both. Is this so, a no-fault no situation? Well, yes, this would be it, but even I, I, if, yes, Even if the would, wife simply deserts the husband, she can nevertheless reach in and claim... Well, that might be part of the conditions <clears throat> in which she might not get all, but all of the money would be considered. The percentage would what be what would be the uh, arguing point. Well, not but, uh, uh, not uh, what <clears throat> would be considered, but how much would go to each. Now, does it work the other way around? Mrs. Jones is very rich. Mr. Jones is not. He decides to leave her. Can he reach in and take part of her stuff? Not if she brought it to the marriage ahead no, of time. Uh, but, you know, well, the marital property, that's what no fault is all about. Mm -hmm. No fault. Mm -hmm. you, but you, you, you sort of smile when you <laughs> contemplate this. Uh, aren't, you, aren't you a little bit indignant? that a wife who decides to leave her husband should nevertheless file a claim? Well, I'm not indignant <laughs> if a husband decides to leave his wife and she gets, you know, she has a right to his money. So I think it works both ways, obviously. No, but it seems to me if he takes the initiative in annulling, in effect, uh, their conjugal relationship, he, uh, you can understand that he should be m made to pay. Uh, 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 oh, what, are you yeah. saying if but, she... But that's if, right. Well, the law, unfortunately, says no fault, so um, I think that uh, that's really what happens is that there is an, what's called a so-called equitable distrib distribution of the property, and certainly that would be taken into account in some states, but not in all, the fact that one had deserted the other. Well, now, in, in, in uh, advocating, which of course I know you do, a federal law uh, that would have the roughly speaking, the same effect as this, would you qualify it on the matter of equitable distribution depending, or would you have a no-fault law? I think we have to start at the beginning. I do not support a federal community property law, mm -hmm. but I do support federal recognition of the fact that we have 10 jurisdictions within the United States, nine states in Puerto Rico, that do have a community property law. Uh, and too much of federal law ignores that fact. We're I would about double support, taxation or, or what? No, with respect to uh, application of Medicaid law, with respect to the uh, application of uh, the pension protections, which are overprotective or underprotective in certain cases, um, and disregard community property rights. But what I am in favor of is a uniform marital property act, uniform acts. Uh, get their first name because they're drafted by the Uniform Commissioners. Mm -hmm. The Uniform Commissioners is a voluntary body of uh, what I call shadow legislators. You mean they're uniform that would apply to the ten existing states? No, to the Uniform states. Act that could be adopted by any state that wanted to look at it and adopt it. Because That's what Wisconsin did. That's the how a normative constitution, a, a normative uh, 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 arch legal architecture. Um, more than a standard, more than a statement basically. in principle, it's a model statute, which is served, you know, on, on a now in, in, in creating that statute. Uh, what uh, priorities do you primarily consult? Uh, justice, or, or feminism, or, or um, uh, uh, the, the social impact? There is a the, there's a group. Excuse me. <laughs> There's a group in Indiana that is attempting to get uh, uh, the Marital Property Act adopted there. And uh, their name is the Fairness Coalition. Fairness. And in fact, when I go around the country and speak about community property law, often to national audiences, very often a man, most of my audiences are men, mo very often a man, a lawyer or an accountant from Texas, 
or one of the other community property states will come up to me afterwards and say, you know, Mary, it's got to pass sooner or later because it's the fair way to go. The trouble is, fair is the most abused word in the English language. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, you're right. Like the fair you're play right. for Cuba right. committee. Right, right, well. right. right. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, but, but, but it's you know, fair, you're, you're it makes me. sense, it, make, it is consistent, it provides for the same law it, during marriage. But at by the way, I think that's death. the real distinction, by the way, because even if you have a community property law, it doesn't mean that when a divorce comes, everything is split down the middle, one walks away with half and the other walks away with the other half. That isn't what really happens. But what the community property does is give access to money during the marriage. In other words, if you live in the state of New York and the husband is the wage earner and everything comes in and is in his name, he controls that money. His wife doesn't really have any access to it. It's his money. He is able to control the marriage in a sense because he doles it out. If you oh. are in a community property state, the community property goes into effect during the marriage so that if you're the wage earner and you bring home the paycheck and your wife is home taking care of the kids mm -hmm. or whatever the wife is home doing or even out working but doesn't earn the same amount or even if she out she earns you, a Cadillac. the money is 50 percent yours 50 percent hers from the day it's earned in other words it's <laughs> well, did, 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 both, did she, did you she both have, have right to it she has continuing power to dispose of one half Absolutely. The she, not, not the not same as the dispose. marital money. Well, yes, in California, she can even sell your yacht. But, <laughs> well, <dispose>, transfer <laughs> for fair I wish market my wife value. Had that right. <laughs> transfer for fair market value is different from disposed by way of gifts. Do you read Ann Landers? Ann Landers is a wonder, provides wonderful insight into American culture. Uh, and Ann Landers now and again will print a letter which shows that many wives believe that they live in a state of community property. That is, they do believe that everything that's acquired in the course of marriage really does belong to the two of them. And in fact, they're wrong unless they're part of the quarter of the country that live in well, the so 10 community the property real, jurisdiction. So that's the real distinction and the real problem of not having community property is if there is one wage earner who earns a lot more or earns all the money, the home person does not, the homemaker doesn't really have access to the money. It isn't legally something she's entitled to. It but, has uh, to be, in a sense, by the know, I, largesse I, of the wage earner. Uh, un until um, I read in your, in your book, uh, um, I, didn't, I didn't know about that. And uh, I, uh, my, my own endorsement of uh, a Federal Community Property Act uh, uh, is um, s my enthusiasm slightly diminished <laughs> because it seems to be operationally it's an almost impossible situation but be because one person has to decide how money is to be spent. Why? Uh, well, because um, what do you do if there's a disagreement? Do you go to well, arbitration? Well, I would assume there'd be some disagreement, but do you think one person who makes the money should control it merely because he makes it or she well, makes if, it? Well, if somebody's going to control it, that, that seems but to be But why can't logical. there be a shared decision? Okay, okay <laughs> I'm mad to you. And uh, I'm making all the money, mm. and, have a lot uh, of and I got a hundred thousand dollars at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, and you say um, I want um, I, I want a, a, a beach house in Bermuda, and I say no, dear. Uh, uh, you know, maybe ten years from now, but not now. What happens? Well, we might have quite a few arguments, but uh, if we were in a community property state. We would, I would have more of a say in a sense because legally I would have some right over that money. Uh, obviously, if it's all in your name, I really haven't got no, much to say. I'm talking about a stick part of property state. There, there are two answers. <laughs> One, with respect to certain decisions, uh, community property law, though it may vary from jurisdiction, jurisdiction, requires the consent of both with respect to selling the house, for instance, or putting a mortgage on the home. Consent of both is required, I believe, in all of the community yeah. property states. In so. addition, it may be required in other states as well if they have homestead law. Uh, with some states, the acquisition of real property uh, may require the consent of both. In um, these jurisdictions as well, other major steps such as the acquisition of a business or the getting out of a, a business, the selling all the assets of business, may require a consent of both. That's one asset. You could, the big decisions you can say you need consent of both. Um, another 
point to make is how have partners, business partners, been operating all these years? Business partnership law was codified by the uniform commissioners back uh, almost the turn of the century. So we've lived oh, with well, that. Well, they have, they're presumably, they're both contributing something to the well, partnerships. They, one may yeah. be contributing one kind of, uh, of, of asset or service. You've got the Mr. Moneybags partner yeah, on the no, service. But, but I think represented by stock. Be, okay? I, but I wouldn't, uh, I no. wouldn't equate the, that you, quite You as have 20% and I have 80% of the stock. You, you and would have a controlling my, interest. Have, no, no, no. Yeah. Yes, I we're wouldn't feel about, it's the same we're analogy. We're not talking about corporations. We're talking about partnerships. Even and in partnership partnerships, law, you don't have an equal And partnership percentage. law says that unless you agree to the contrary, you have equal interest in the partnership and each equal interest in the profits and surplus. And each partner is an agent for the partnership and also, importantly, a fiduciary. So you have must a, operate in good faith. So, and there are requirements of Yeah, but I don't think that is going to happen in a marriage. Let's be realistic I, about it. I th I think that, in fact, you're invoking it, the print. You, 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 what you're saying is here's an analogy uh, in which uh, uh, interests uh, are uh, uh, observed and acknowledged. And, and you're saying in, in a marriage, uh, you've got to acknowledge the interest of. Absolutely. I think both, both have to have a share in what happens to the money, well, even if one earns a lot more than the other. I wouldn't. See that it but would you still haven't told me what 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 you do when there's a deadlock. Well, I think you're going to have an argument, obviously, well, obviously and that's an argument. part of working out the marriage. Well, they have an argument in the United Nations every day, <laughs> but but we also have a formal a mechanism by We're which is decided which things. way you go. We're talking about one, an interest in the property, and the other, management and control. Interest in the property that the interest is 50/50 has existed for centuries. Uh, the I'm equal talking about management. The equal. They talk about management. Yeah. You talk about management and control. Equal management has been in existence just for 20 years. Although equal management has been in existence for commercial partnerships for at least the century that the Uniform Partnership Act has existed. When we were drafting the Uniform Par Partnership Act and dealing with the question of management uh, and control, um, I looked at the cases dealing with partnership management and control. Mm -hmm. You know what? There are very few of them. Practically none at all. Whatever disputes there were, were apparently able to be settled internally in one way or well, another. Well, that's because now, I'm not sure all partnerships work the way the theory has well, all right. it. But I there are different some kinds of, of rules of the, management and control. One is the so-called equal management and control, and the other is the so-called title management and control, which says that the person who has the title on the AT&T stock is the one with whom third persons will deal. Mm -hmm. um, but that person whose name is on the AT&T stock knows that 50% of it, if it's marital property, community property, it, um, acquired during marriage, 50% of it belongs to him and 50% of it belongs to her, and knows also that he has to obtain full fair market value. We can't make a gift of that without the consent of the other. Where it's a non-community property state, you can do it. And that's really the big problem for the wife who is not the wage earner. In a non-community property state, she doesn't have that kind of legal right to the money until such time as something happens to the marriage. In other words, she has a right if the marriage ends either in death or divorce. Then there are lots of rules about how the money is going to be divided or how much she will get. Sure, oh, sure, but yeah, in yeah. the marriage, when there's a title control, there's, there's no, no well, say. Well, to say, that, to say there's, there's not a, a record of much litigation on this question uh, uh, you know, reminds me of the husband who's, who, on the 50th anniversary of the wedding, said uh, we decided that uh, she would settle minor questions, I would settle major questions, and we've had no major questions, no major disputes. Uh, the the uh, it, it, it's impossible for me to, to imagine hypothetically a situation uh, in which the authority mustn't ultimately rest with somebody. Well, I think you can have a consensus. I think it has you to be... You keep talking about consensus. It drives me crazy. Because <laughs> I know you can have a consensus, but you but can have a non-consensus, too. Well, I well. think that's what... That's why I, there are so many divorces, I suppose, because couples don't always are agree. Are there fewer divorces in the community's property laws, states? Uh, no, probably not. Well, then you just try to slip a fast one on me. <laughs> no, but, uh, <laughs> but the one wife doesn't end up with less money. You know, in other words, she has more rights to the money. One reason that Wisconsin went 
er, to community property, adopted the Uniform Marital Property Act, was because the women in Wisconsin said, we do better on divorce than we do during marriage or at death. You mean they do because materially better? Yes. We do materially better yes. because divorce had a kind of deferred, it had a, a deferred, for some, um, for some women it can be. Mm -hmm. um, a woman in Connecticut, for instance, uh, living through a fairly uh, awful marriage and controlling marriage, um, who um, may have a shorter life expectancy than her husband, um, and who has worked as a good wife raising four children for 40 years, may well be better off getting divorced. Sure. Because uh, uh, at look. least she will see to it that what she receives, she can pass on to her children and grandchildren. And she has... Uh, this is 15 years ago, and somebody marries Bill Gates. Right. And uh, all of a sudden, somebody approaches Mr. Gates and says, Mr. Gates, are you aware that if you sh shake off uh, this 15-year relationship, you can walk out with $600 million? Uh, that's rather an interesting incentive, it seems to me, to, uh, to undo that marriage. Maybe that's uh, why he's still a bachelor. <laughs> that's, that's why I mentioned it. But the, uh, actually, is he, is he a California resident? I believe he so is. He would be I, I wouldn't that. know. But that's also why a lot of people would decide to have prenuptial agreements because... Oh, can they transcend community Absolutely. Oh, yes. As I prenuptial like, like agreements law. totally do. Yes. So well, you make, I think yeah, you'll talk be about seeing more yeah. and more of that when people but, realize, or if you have community property states, you may see more, com more prenuptial agreements because people will say, I don't want to give you 50% of everything, and therefore I think we should write our own agreement that will say how we're going to divide does it. That, does that stand in the way of common law principles about waiving rights? That's part of what uh, you do in a prenuptial agreement, basically, is you waive the rights that the state would otherwise give you. So, uh, But no, I'm asking, uh, uh, will the state enforce a contract in which you waive rights? That's it's what a prenuptial agreement is. It's a waiver of rights, and in those basically they do stutter. Oh, yes, they stand up. I'm told a hitchhiker can't waive his rights, but but uh, but a wife. A wife can. certainly can waive her rights, or a husband, or a husband, or a husband. Right. But there have to be appropriate safeguards. There are a few standards. That is, she has to know what it is she's waiving. Yes. Uh, disclosure of uh, both. She should have her own her representation. Rights or his rights. There's a due and, diligence uh, the, hearing on this. Uh, well, uh, yes, you can then, yes, otherwise analogy. you could yes. come back and invalidate an agreement because the wife could say, he told me he had $20 when we got married and so I waived my rights and mm. then it turned out he had $20 million. Well, she has no rights to those $20 million anyway. If she would have. If it's a separate Well, it depends. There are some states, uh, some states, <laughs> Connecticut being one, Massachusetts being one, uh, do not make this distinction between marital and separate property upon divorce. But Connecticut so, doesn't have a community property act. No, but they would use all of they would put all of the money into the pot, so to speak, when there were was a divorce and they were well, dividing that, that, that it. Well, that would for make equitable. sense if there wasn't community property. I mean, if uh, if if he leaves his wife and he's worth a ton of money, uh, uh, the court shouldn't care whether he inherited the money or whether he made it. Well, in New York they do, in Connecticut and Massachusetts what they don't. What community property states care about and what um, the deferred community property states, those that have equitable distribution of marital property on divorce states care about, is the length of the marriage. Community property works beautifully for our uh, generation of uh, serial polygamy, of one marriage after another, because it's only the property acquired in the course of that marriage that's available for distribution that belongs uh, half to the one and half to the other, and that is considered available dist for distribution in some of the community property states. It's interesting, though, the community property states divide almost the same way that the separate property or common law states divide on divorce. That is, we've got some separate no. property states which are really deferred community property states. They say we're dividing <coughs> only marital property. That's state of New York. Is, is, is is there, is, are, are there circumstances in which there's forfeiture? Mrs. Jones divorces him to marry Donald Trump. There's some uh, fault, um, but very little. Well, um, in Connecticut, there's a great deal of fault. Well. Fault is permitted to, uh, to be considered by the judges, but uh, uh, I'm told by those who know in Connecticut that uh, it all depends what the, the uh, 
judge's favorite fault is. Uh, there may be a judge who will blink at adultery, but you be could have shocked economic by alcoholism. Fault, or you, you could know. have even economic but, fault. Uh, there was, what is the, oh gosh, I'm so bad at sports, the hockey player who was married. Uh, Wayne know, Gretzky? No, no. Um, That's the one I oh know. God. It's in your book. Yes, it's in my book, and now I can't remember his name uh. because I'm so bad. But anyway, he decided he wanted to uh, stop playing hockey, yeah. and uh, when he and his wife divorced, they took the amount of money that he would have earned had he continued playing as earnings that he had basically dissipated and his wife was awarded what would have been oh that God. amount. So that yeah, was considered that's... economic fault yeah. and uh, you, it doesn't, fault these days does not necessarily have to be uh, adultery, it can be economic fault as well. So if you went yeah. and gambled the assets, say. But, but uh, those different kinds of, ass of, of faults play different roles. Yeah. That is, in a state like Connecticut, in not too many states, now, but in a state like Connecticut, fault can play a role. The, the traditional fault the, that was the cause for the divorce can play a role in the division of property. It can also Whereas play economic dissipation, unfortunately, in Connecticut, does not uh, appear to play a role. Um, the, the Connecticut courts seem to say, well, what's gone is gone, and you we won't consider seconds. that. As okay, I was going <laughs> to say there's a distinction also between dividing up the property and the awarding of alimony and fault can play a part in the awarding of alimony, which we haven't even talked about. But thank, thank you, Professor Wending. Thank you, Mrs. Shelby Steele, author of no, What Every you. Woman Should Know About Her Husband's Money Except My Woman. <laughs> oh, I'll send her a copy. Thank you, Lady Dalvin. <laughs>